I mean, you think of it this way, God created the world in six days. He could have done it in one hour. He could have done it in one minute. He decided to do it for six days. And he took the seventh day as a rest day. Why did he do that? Was he bored? I don't think so. I think he did it as a, as a, you know, as an example to us that you have to bust your butt for six freaking days and create results. He didn't just, he wasn't busy. God was productive. with Spinning Fire and today is Monday. And as you guys know, every single Monday we come at you and spit fire and spit truth and nothing but the truth. And today's topic is something that's very, very dear to me. Being busy versus being productive. Now, as you guys know, being productive is the key to becoming successful in any arena, whether it's the gym, whether it's sports, whether it's business, whether it's in life, whether it's with children, whatever it may be, you have to be productive. And there's a big difference, and we're gonna kinda help you guys distinguish the difference between being busy and being productive. And today I have a special guest of mine, okay, a very dear friend of mine. His name is E. Crizzle, E. Rizzle, Eric Christ. Say what's up, Mr. Eric. What's up, I'm just curious when I'm gonna stop being a special guest and, you know, you're a special guest. You know what? You're a special guest always because you're very special in my heart. I love you as a brother. I love you as a friend. Nothing more. All right? No best friend, just friend. All right, we gotta let it in there. Anyway, so, a little inside. So what, let's talk about what busy is all about. Okay, you've obviously ran offices with multiple, multiple agents. You've had about almost 150 plus people working for you at one point. Uh, right now you're building from the ground up all over again and you're doing very, very well. You have two large you know large organizations that are growing in two different states so you're creating some momentum okay yeah. but what is the difference that you've seen when it comes to people that are being busy and productive right we're going to talk about the four ways to identify how to know if you're busy and not productive but what is the difference so to say but you know with being busy like what does busy mean to you I mean, you said it earlier, I think, you know, busy is kind of like the hamster, right? In the wheel that's just kind of spinning the wheel. They're creating a lot of motion, a lot of movement, but not a lot of things are getting done. They're not, they're not going anywhere. They're just running in circles basically. And I think- It's kind of like someone running on a treadmill. Yeah, on a treadmill, right? You're, you're running really fast, but you're going nowhere fast. And, and that's really the difference, right? You have to understand and identify how to move forward with, with that, you know, with that movement versus just staying in place. And I think that's really today's topic, but, um, so let me ask you a question because a lot of people think that by filling up the calendar it's going to keep them you know productive like for example I always talk about the white space in your calendar is the devil's place to attack so what do you think about that because I always say that listen if you put white space in your calendar the devil finds you know that that white space and attacks you and throws distractions and throws struggles and throws all kinds of bullshit to get you out of the P and C mode. And a lot of people have been asking, what the hell is P and C mode? The persistent and consistent mode. So my question to you is this: What does it mean to be productive? Okay, what like what is productive mean? Like I'm working hard, I'm going to school, I'm going to the gym. Is that really productive, or can that be described as uh, you know busy? Like how do you determine which one is busy and which one is productive? Right. Well. Well, let me first start by saying this. I think, first of all, being busy is important. If, you, if you're idle for too long and you're doing no activity, then that, that's really detrimental. So I'll being idle is the worst. worst. Being idle is the worst because doing nothing, you're setting yourself up you know, for guaranteed failure. At least if you're busy, sometimes you throw shit against the wall and it sticks, but it doesn't always mean that that's obviously the best approach. So you have to be smart and not just- So if you're lucky, you'll get something, you'll get some results. I said, even a broken clock is right at least twice a day. That's my quote for today. But um, That's I, I, I gotta think, think about that. I think um, the key thing is that sometimes people think that just by busy, uh, just by being busy, they're going to create results and be productive. And sometimes, ironically, um, actually taking breaks and and not you know doing anything is the most productive thing you can do. And for me personally, I know that you know sometimes it's the breaks and the time in between being really busy that actually allow me to be productive because it gives me a chance to kind of breathe, open up a little bit, clear my mind. So this way, when I do get back to work, I can be 10 times more productive. I mean, you think of it this way, God created the world in six days. He could have done it in one hour. He could have done it in one minute. He decided to do it for six days. And he took the seventh day as a rest day. Why did he do that? Was he bored? I don't think so. I think he did it as a, as a you know, as an example to us 
that you have to bust your butt for six freaking days and create results. He didn't just, he wasn't busy. God was productive. He created the mountains, he created the oceans, the fish, the this, the that, and he created this beautiful world. So it took a lot of energy to create that. And he literally did it in six days. And then the seventh day, he said, you know what? I'm gonna chillax, I'm gonna rest, because I need to kind of recharge a little bit, right? So I think a lot of people think that being busy is running around like a chicken with no head. And so many people do that. So many people run around like a chicken with no head and they get no results. And year in, year out, they have these awesome, awesome yearly resolutions, which we are talking about a couple of weeks back in New Year's, and they get nothing done. Nothing accomplished by March, by April. I wanna say this too. Now, we don't have it on the list, but you know, uh, Grant Cardone talks a lot about 10X. And I think for me, it takes a lot of energy just to almost stay, you know, just to kind of keep up with the world, just to, just to kind of not let yourself deteriorate, whether that be your health or, you know, your business or your relationships. It takes a certain amount of energy and work just to stay, you know, uh, mediocre, just to stay average. 100%. Now to be productive on a whole nother level, you have to put in, you have to be willing to put in a tremendous amount of energy and work. And I think that sometimes people put in, you know, just enough work to get by, but they're not willing to put in that extra work to be productive. And, you know, I think 10 X and your, your, uh, you know, everything pretty much is, is one of the major ways. Now, even though that's not on the list and we can get that into a second, I yeah. just want to kind of add that. Well, I like that. I mean, 10 X in your life is, is key. I mean, I literally remember when I started to really use that word 10 X in my life, Everything started to change. As a matter of fact, it was just three years ago that I was knocking on doors as an agent. And I literally 10 x it, and now we have almost 70 plus people working in our company. So it wasn't by accident, it was 10x action. It was one person. I literally 10 x it to 10 people, and then from 10 people, we're 10 xing it to 100 people. And then from 100 people, guess what we're gonna do? We're gonna have 1,000 people, right? And that's how you gotta do it. So being productive is creating results. And I remember 19, 20, 21, 22, I was busy but I was not productive. I thought I was productive. And we're gonna talk about that in a second. But, but and here's maybe the more of the debate of it. I love were debates. You, were, were, was it really that you weren't productive? Because we talk about that bamboo story where sometimes you're creating results, but the results aren't obvious, right? They're underneath the surface of everything. It's kind of like, you know, some of the, the best sprinters in the world. It's not like they, they just, you know, it's all the hard work that you don't see. And then all of a sudden it just- But you can grow like a bamboo tree or you can choose to grow like an oak tree or another tree or whatever tree you choose to be. You choose to be which tree you want to be. Why do you have to be a bamboo tree? Why should it take you five years to grow? Maybe it's, Christmas tree. You can be a Christmas tree, right? But my, my, my point is this. I made a decision to be a bamboo tree. I could have been a different kind of tree that grows much faster. I'm not really sure. I'm not a you know, plant, whatever you call that. Bionist. A bionist, okay? I didn't, bionist. I didn't finish college, right? I'm not a bionist to know what day, <laughs> what, you know, what tree grows the fastest or whatever. All I know is this. There are people that do things the right way. Why did I grow so fast in the past three years more than I've ever did in the past five, you know, five to eight, eight years? It's, yes, the bamboo tree plays a big role into it. Huge effect, the education, the compound effect, yes. But I think I could have done it faster. I put myself through such a painful process for no reason. Excruciating pain, I just stretched the time. It's like a lot of people that are about to break up with their girl and they stretch it. They drag it for such a long time. You gotta pull that bandaid off. You gotta like go so, 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 so what I think, what I think is this, sorry to interrupt. Yeah. What I think is this, is that you can grow very, very rapidly. Speed is the new game. With technology, speed is available. Like you can do things so much faster than our parents did. Our parents should do things in five years, we can do that in six so months. what do you say to people who say that, um, you know, slow and steady wins the race? Slow and steady, I mean listen, you want to be the tortoise and the hare and the multi-millionaire, right? And I learned it from Grant Cardone, right? You don't want to be just the hare. A lot of people want to be hare, and they got a lot of hair on their fucking tongue. Listen, hair today, gone tomorrow. Hair today, gone tomorrow, right? The point is this, you don't want to be a hamster in the wheel, you want to be the hamster that runs with the wheel, if that makes sense. Like you want to be that guy that's moving forward, cracking things, making moves, making things happen. Because listen, it's not easy to be productive. Being productive is a different level. And we're going to talk about that in a second. Being productive is on another, like you're on a different mental mindset. All your friends may be busy, but you can be productive as hell. And literally everything you touch turns into gold because everything that you're doing is 100% productive. So let's talk about the four ways to identify if you are busy and not productive. Okay, number one, too much activity, no results. Now remember, sometimes in the beginning, I agree with you, you have to go through the process, the learning curve, but if you're doing something for a while and you have too much activity and there's no results, what's up, baby? 
it's like you're kind of beating your head against the you're wall. You're beating your head against the wall. without... Correct, correct. I mean, like, listen, you think about it. I was doing that for you know, about two, three years. Banging my head against the wall, thinking I'm doing the same thing over and over again, busting my ass, when in reality, I was doing the wrong kind Isn't of work. the definition of insanity? Doing the same thing over and over and I know you expecting love, a different result. And I know you love Albert Einstein, so that's what he talked about, right? Because a lot of times I see, people, I see people go to the gym. I've been in the gym for like a couple, you know, 10 years almost consistently. I've been in the gym for 10 years consistently, and I've gained some results. But I've seen people that have been in the gym for 10 years and they still look the same. They actually are decaying in the process. Why? Because they're doing activity and not productive. You could be in the gym for three hours or you could be in the gym for so, an hour. Not to get too far down this question, but how do you know if you are creating results if sometimes those results are internal and you don't actually see the physical, you know, results? As long as there's results. Nobody said there has to be internal or external results for you to identify it as results. As long as there's results. If you have internal results, that's no results. For example, me, at the you know, 23, 24, I started to see results in my mental mind game. My shift started to go. I was starting to, to you know, get more in control of my emotions. And when I started to control my emotions, I'm like, wow, this thing is powerful. Like, this ball of energy, Michael Marive, like, you're full of this energy. Like, you could take this freaking ball and throw it towards whatever you want and just win. Just learn how to control it. So, so when do you know when, when, you know, enough is enough. If you're not getting results for what, you know, a couple of weeks, couple of months, I mean, listen, years. when you start, this is the second thing. When you start feeling like you're burning out, that's another reason, that's another way to find out you're busy. If you feel like you're burning out, first of all, you don't burn out. Candles burn out, okay? Why would you burn out? The only way you burn out is if you're doing something consistently without creating results and, and just or zero passion. I've seen lots, especially in the sales business. Oh yeah. I've seen a ton of agents, you know, say that they've burned out. Um, and it's usually that there's no growth, there's no results, and the there's, reason, no, there's no productivity. It's just doing the same thing over and over and over again, and then they get tired of it because they're, they're not growing from it, so they just burn out. I'll tell you right now, and we might do a podcast on this, how to identify if you're burning out and how to uh, solve that problem, right? The only reason why people burn out is because they have not figured out their purpose and their why. I probably work harder than a lot of people. I put a lot of hours in. As a matter of fact, I neglect a lot of other areas of my life. Sometimes it may seem like that because I'm so focused on getting this company to hundred million dollars. Like I'm so focused. I'm so like, it's like, it's like I see it everywhere I go. When I go to the gym, all I think about is my company about how many people I'm going to help. Cause it's not just about the money. Like I make enough money guys. Like no disrespect like to anybody. I'm not trying to be a big shot. I'm just a little guy. I took a bunch of shots and got them in. I make enough money. I make a lot of money. Okay, I'm considered to be a millionaire. I was a millionaire at 26 years old, okay? But my point is this, just because I'm a millionaire doesn't mean that money motivates me. I'm extremely not motivated by money. Money does not motivate me. If they did, I would be my Lamborghini right now. And trust me, I can afford it. The reason why I do what I do, because I want to impact millions of people. The reason why I do the Spinning Fire Podcast, because I want to change people's lives. The reason why I do videos is because I want someone to say, Michael, you helped me to not kill myself. That's why I do what I do. So when you have a purpose that's so deep like that, you can't be busy, man. Productive. You can't burn, burn out. And you can't burn out. Well, you can't be busy. It's like the it's like the 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 match is always on the flame. It's keeping it lit. I am the flame. Yeah. I don't need I don't need to go to the fucking flame. I am the flame. I don't even need the match. My whole life I needed to someone to you know, light me up. Now I am the flame. That's what we call the spitting fire. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm spitting the truth, baby. Right? Like so that. number three, to identify if you're busy and not productive is your emotions are not stabilized. If you're an emotional yo-yo. When you're creating work, you are busy, you are not productive. You cannot consider yourself productive when your emotions are flaring all over the place. Explain that a little bit. Very simple. So your emotions are a bowl of energy. You have fear, you have hunger, you have anger, you have love, you have all kinds of emotions, happy. If you cannot control the beast, if you cannot tame the beast, if you cannot control yourself, if you cannot, cannot control your mindset, your attitude, your actions, your energy, then someone else is controlling you like a yo-yo and you're like a puppet. So when things go good, you're excited. When things go bad, you're depressed and you want to kill yourself. So you have that emotional imbalance. You are not considered busy. When you're productive, nothing phases your emotions. When you're productive, you create results. You are super laser beam focused. Nobody's going to stop you. You got a lawsuit coming? Bring it on, bitches. You got people quitting on you? Let's go recruit some more people. You are always focused on solution mode, not problem mode. Well, th this, is, this is my response. Yeah. I would say that for me, it's not that, you know, when your emotions are unstable, it's not that you can't be productive. It's that your productive gets negated by all the 
uh, destruction that you do in terms of bad emotions. So when things 100%. are going well, you can be very productive. The problem is, as soon as things flip, Boop. then you start to crash and burn, and then it brings you right back to you know to ground zero. Hundred percent. So you can build and you can grow. The problem is, is are you stable enough emotionally to keep growing to keep? Hundred percent. Another thing is, you know, this is number four. How to identify your busy and productive is you jump from task to task. So many people, they go from task to task to task to task, and they never root themselves. They never get themselves locked into something. Like, I've been in the direct sales game since I was like 17 years old. I've been working in the streets of 47th Street. I've been working with AT&T, Digital Life Home Security. I was working with Tom Warner Cable. I've been working with Verizon. I've been working with so many different companies. I worked in the mall working for a company called Face to Face, taking out flyers and signing up kids for modeling at 18, 19 years old. No, it wasn't actually the phone. Oh, but <laughs> I like that, right? So my thing is this, I did it all. I was face to face with customers since I was 17. So I never jumped from business. And I had my you know, online business, which was direct sales. I never said, oh, you know what? Let me be an engineer tomorrow. Oh, you know what? Let me do computer engineering. Oh, let me know what? Let me do software engineering. Oh, let me do this. I stayed in one lane. So you don't want to be a jack of all trades master. I'm a master of what I'm doing. If I need to hire, look, for example, I suck at writing. How you doing, Eric? You need a job? I'll hire you to write my book, as an example. Yeah. How you doing, Joey? You're good at software engineering? I'll pay you to work for me? For example, we got Tony Waves up in this. I don't know how to touch it. I don't even know how to make a picture look right. Mandingo. Right? I don't even know how it looks good. But I know one thing. I got Tony motherfucking Waves who could take nice videos and edit them for me and create value in my life. And guess what? I exchanged something that we call money. I give him a certain amount of money. He goes home happy to his family. He creates some value for me. I'm happy. He's happy. Money will buy you all the trades you need. I don't need to be the jack of all trades. I'm the ace of the money. And the money will give me all the trades I'll I give need. You, I'll give you a perfect example. You already brought up the gym. It's like me at the gym. Yeah. I jump from machine to machine to machine. So really, I know in the back of my head, I'm not really. You're not creating I'm results. Not, <laughs> I look at you. I'm like, listen, I get my, as soon as my I look starts at you. to pump, I start working my legs. I look at you and I have a blast. Cause you remind me of one of those guys that walk in there to go to the weight. Bro, I'll tell you what. They run around, I'll they check my... how much they weigh again, and they go running around, they check their weight again, they come back tomorrow and say, yo, I gained one pound. Bro, my favorite machine at the gym is the sauna. It's the best thing. <laughs> I go in there, I sweat a little bit. But I'm still creating results. You're just 10 times slower. You're busy. I'm busy. You're busy in the gym while I know people that are super productive. Like, I don't even consider myself productive. Yeah, but I have the like, body of a goddess. I mean, Maybe. <laughs> I'm a god. Right? So let's talk, about, let's talk about this quickly so we can finish this podcast very quickly because you know our viewers, our listeners are going to have a blast listening to this one. The five ways to increase productivity. Number one, focus. Don't spread. Don't be a jack of all trades. Be the ace of all the money. Be the ace that controls everything. I remember a long time ago, I was reading a book. I forgot which one it was, right? And it was about, it was a, it was a book on Henry Ford, actually. They asked Henry Ford, how do you make this? How do you do this? How do you do this? How do you do that? He's like, I don't know. They asked, oh, they were asking about facts. Like facts about certain cars and stuff like that. He's like, listen, I'm not a fact man. You need all the facts. I got a 17 of my engineers in my team. They can answer all the facts for you. And that was the smartest thing I ever read in my entire life. I was like, you don't have to be a fact man. You don't have to be a know-it-all man. You just gotta have to have the best team around you. So focus in one thing. Don't try to do everything. I see a lot of people, they can do construction, they can do this, they can do this, they can do... Bro, I can't hang, you see this clock right here? I didn't hang it up. I have no idea how to do that. But guess what? My brother does. Guess what? My cousin may be able to do it. Guess what? Tony may know how to do it. I have no idea, but guess what? I'll pay someone to put up that clock. Some of you guys are probably gonna call me around and say, Mike, <laughs> let me put up that clock. Start the bidding process, right? The point is this, why do I need to waste my energy and my time to figure out how to fucking do a clock? Why do I need to waste my energy to learn how to fucking paint a wall? We need some paint jobs right now. I ain't gonna worry about that shit. I'm gonna find someone and pay them. Okay, so focus, don't spray. Number two, pour gas on the fire. You got fire in your life, you got momentum in your life, pour the gas on the fire. If you spin in fire, pour some gas, make words, it more fire. Don't take your foot off the gas Never. just because you're doing well. In fact, put your foot on the gas even harder. I remember I was in a go-kart city as a young kid and the guy was on the microphone, you know, speaking and stuff, you know, the little announcing guy. It's like, push the gas and move your ass. And that's the one thing I never forgot. Push the gas and move your ass, baby. Don't be busy, be productive, okay? Number three, 
Work smart, not hard. If you're a doctor, if you're a lawyer, if you're an engineer, if you're a software guy, if you're a multi-level marketing guy, if you are a ditch digger, stop working hard and work smart. If you are a ditch digger, find a way to get a machine to dig you the hole instead of you sitting there with your shovel by yourself. Or hire someone else to do it for you. Be a manager of the dish, dish grading business. Whatever it may be, be smart, not stupid. Stop working hard. Stop busting your ass and breaking down your body. Do something that's smarter than everything else. Find ways to solve your problems with machines, with technology, with AI. Figure it out. There's so many tools out there. Work hard and work smart. And that's the way you're gonna succeed, right? Number four. This is important. Count your blessings. Count your blessings. Okay? And if you can count your blessings, you'll have one thing called gratitude. And gratitude helps you to be more productive. A lot of times when people create success when they do all this work and all this stuff, they actually start to feel like they're the magic. And when you think you're the magic, you start to slow down. And instead of speeding up. And what ends up happening, Okay, what ends up happening is that you think you're the big shot. And what everything was, everything starts to go up, up, up. Because you put the gas off the flame, you start to slowly decay. Okay, you have to have gratitude. Never forget from where you came from. I will never forget the way I started. I remember I made a promise to God. I said I was eight years old, I'll never forget. I looked into the mirror, I was crying. I said, God, you have to make me rich and famous so I can help kids that are in my shoes that feel the way I feel and I never want them to feel this way. And I made a commitment at a very young age. I was eight years old. I was crying. I will never forget that day. And I remember 13 years old and I remember 16 years old and I remember 19 years old were crucial, cru cru you know, I would say uh, uh, cr crucial moments in my life where I made decisions where I said when I become rich in the process, when I become famous in that process, not when it happens, but throughout that process, I'm going to be helping people. And I was giving my, my, my tithing, and I was giving my donations, and I was doing a charity, because I remember as a kid I made a promise. And when you are grateful and you have gratitude in your life, you start to understand that, hey, you don't have time to be busy, you have only time for being productive. And that's how you create results, okay? And the last thing is, number five, track what you do, okay? A lot of us think, I mean, you could talk about this as well, a lot of us think we do all this work, <laughs> when in reality we did this much work, very little. We think we were doing 20 sales this week, but we sat there and tracked our work. <laughs> Six sales. Because you were running around with your head cut off, like a chicken with no head, like I always say, and you think you create all these results. Your check comes in, you got five, five, five sales only. Your check comes in, you got 40 hours instead of 60. You thought you were doing overtime. Some of you guys are working part-time, full-time, overtime, all the time. Some of you guys are lazy, no time. Right? Sometime. Sometime, right? My point is this, you gotta track your shit. How do you know what you're doing? Track it. I know exactly how much money I made at 23 years old. I know exactly what I did on every single day of most of my days in my calendar. Why? Because everything is in my calendar. I know exactly what I gotta do in the next 30 minutes. I know what I have to do. You have to put it in the calendar. Now a lot of people may have a bank account and a lot of people may have a calendar, but do you use it? That's the question. Well, track it. If you track it, you can start macking it. You don't track it, it ain't gonna happen, my friends. What gets measured gets accomplished. Ooh, you see this guy has better quotes. I mean, this guy has like he words. Got quotes. He got quotes floating out his ass. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But anyway, listen. Well, hopefully you guys, before we before we end this, yeah. hopefully you guys understand the difference between being busy and productive. And I know Eric has something to say, but before we end this, I want Eric to say something that I'm gonna you know, end it off a little bit. But don't forget, don't forget that sometimes you may have to bang your head against the wall just a little bit, just to have a little bit of that pain to get into that productive mode. It's not always easy to be in the productive mode. It's like, it's like being a thousandaire versus a millionaire or being a millionaire versus a billionaire. Does that make sense? It's a big difference. It's a huge gap. So some of you guys may be, you know, a thousandaire right now and you're thinking, how the hell do I get to a million bucks? And can I be honest with you? It's not a, it's not a, it's not a hard jump. It's very simple to do. You just gotta want it bad enough. You gotta have it to the point where you really, really, really want it and you start changing your schedule to be 100% productive. And remember, you don't have to put 14 hours a day to be productive. 
I'd rather you put four hours a day into something and be productive than 14 hours and be busy. Because a lot of the work you guys can do can be done in four and a half hours, five, six hours. Be productive, not busy, okay? So Eric, he wants to end a couple, you know, say a couple of things before well, we end I this just party. wanted to touch on that last point, track what you do. Now, I am definitely not the most organized. But it's okay, hey, hold um, on. I, I don't. You pay someone. No, no, I, I, I have other people and, and systems that are able to track. 100%. Them, but <laughs> what, I, what I will say is 100%. This, um, I like to look at it this. Most people, they 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 measure their ups to their downs, and the problem with that is sometimes what looks you might think you're going backwards because you know things start to go backwards a little bit, but what what happens is when you measure your ups to your downs and your highs to your lows, is it can be it can have a very bad emotional you know strain on. And it lies. It lies. It lies. Yeah, yeah, it, it lies, right? Because you think all of a sudden, right, your results go down a little bit. Oh, I must be doing something wrong. And then you go through this whole thing. And then because you're comparing last week's highs to this week's lows, but what you have to really do it. And what really, you know, the way I look at it is you want to compare your highs to your highs and your lows to your lows, right? Like my low point in, the, in this day and age is, is still pretty fucking good. Like I live a pretty decent life. I'm always pretty happy. My team's doing pretty good. Yeah. We might have a slow week or something might happen, but you know, what, you know, my low three years ago would have been pretty fucking bad. Yeah. You know, and and so that's why being grateful is key. Yeah, you gotta be grateful and you gotta compare your highs to your highs. So you know if you're growing, you know you're being productive when your highs are always outdoing your last high and your lows are a little bit higher than your last low. And that's the way I kind of look at it. Hundred so, percent. I mean I, I I respect that because you know, between me and you, a lot of people think they're doing all this work in their highs, and then things start to go down to their lows. And they really think they're doing all this work. Like they don't understand that you gotta track. They gotta, you gotta track everything. Like it, it, it's scary. It, like that's scary, but it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. You gotta track. You know everything, so you can track how much hours you put. How much hours are you really working? Not how much this says on your fucking paycheck, but how much hours out of those eight hours are you really, really working? Think about it. You got one hour of lunch, which I in my, in my mind I'm like, what the hell's wrong with you? You got an hour of lunch. I gobble my food like gobble, gobble, gobble like 17 minutes. I get the leftover. He gets a leftover sometimes. Seven minutes sometimes I'm like stuffing a sandwich down my throat. I walk and eat. Oh, Michael's not good for your digestive system. Digestive system? <laughs> I don't give a fuck about my digestive system right now. I go shit it out next month, Pretty next bad. week, next whatever, right? I just wanna what? I wanna get the food into my body. I'm gonna use it as fuel. Pleasure is on the weekends. I enjoy my steaks. You don't eat my steaks, bro. <laughs> I enjoy my steaks <laughs> on the weekend, but that's pretty much it. So anyway, I love every one of you guys, okay? Don't forget, four ways to identify you are busy and not productive. Number one, too much activity, no results. You feel like you're burning out, which is number two. Number three, your emotions are not stabilized. Number four, you're jumping from task to task. Now, the five ways to increase productivity. Mr. Eric Chris, go ahead with those. Focus, don't spray. <laughs> Pour gas on the fire, right? When you're doing well, step on the gas uh. even harder. Work smart and not just hard. Don't keep banging your head against the wall if it's not working. Uh, count your blessings, be grateful, and always track what you do. What gets measured gets accomplished. Woo! And as you guys know, you can find us on Instagram, Michael underscore Bariah. You can find Mr. Eric at Eric Chris on Instagram as well. You can find us on Facebook. Yeah, Michael Bariah and Eric. Eric Chris, all right? So as you guys know, every single Monday we spit fire at nothing but the truth. Share this with a friend. Hopefully, they can be productive as you.